Hey everybody, Doug here from Two Plus Stuff. Okay, I just hit the uh, the live button, so let's see how that works. But uh, it's a little awkward. YouTube kind of changed the way they do things so that I can like, um, it's it's a new setup that they're trying to do. So basically I can schedule live streams out in the future. And so like that way it pops up as like, hey, Doug's gonna be streaming. And so it's just very efficient, um, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. And so, yeah, like I said, go ahead and let me know if you can see and hear me okay. I'm standing by my chat, ready and waiting. And we'll just keep an eye on uh, what is being said. So, um, yeah, if you didn't... <clears throat> sorry, if you didn't join me yesterday, uh, basically we sat down and painted five uh, Blight Kings. And so um, that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be continuing that work. Basically, um, all we, we got to the point where... Um, all of the base coats and the wash were done, but then, um, the, uh, washes take so long, especially if you're using contrast. So I see I have, what, 13 viewers, one like, go ahead and let me know if you can hear and see me, please. Just so I am hundred percent sure before I keep going, I can, I can ramble forever, but I want to make sure that stuff's working. <laughs> and I know there's a bit of a delay between when I, when I say something and when y'all say something, so... Um, or when y'all like respond. So forgive, forgive the weird rough opening. Like I said, I was trying to, trying to do this thing where I can schedule a, a, a live stream. And so people who view the channel actually get like alerted to when stuff starts. So that's kind of the idea. I would like to be able to do that. Um, to all of a sudden have like a regular streaming time and like schedule stuff out so people can join and that kind of thing. So anywho. Let's see. Still not seeing anything in the chat. Let me make sure stuff's working here. Hmm. I was most worried about the chat, if that would work or not, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not, uh, nope. Okay, there it is. Yeah, finishing the Blight Kings. Okay. Well, um, I'm gonna go assuming stuff's working. I can see the live show. Yep, there it is. Weird. Okay. Let me reload this page. Aha, there it is. Okay, everybody. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> okay, now I got the... Looks like the chat's working and stuff's coming on. Okay, cool. Then let me go to my thing. I'm still... I'm not quite sure... Uh, what was going on there? It's, um, so YouTube put out a new, like, it's like a beta interface for, um, the streaming software. And it's like, at this point, it's optional to use, but I, I kind of feel like, I, you know, I always try to be an early adopter of stuff. So I'm like, not <clears throat> inconvenienced when the, the real change comes later on, like where you don't have a choice anymore. And, uh, it was just a little bit weird. That's all. So, Sweet. Weird rough opening. Sorry, everybody. Omniphage, hello. He says we are yammering. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, so I'm sorry. I'm reading the comments from before. Basically, um, so I went live on my uh, broadcasting software on my PC, but now with the new thing on YouTube, you have to click go live. And so that's why I went weirdly live mid-sentences because I realized that right then I was like, ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. And so now I got it figured out. I think we're good. So, uh, hopefully I just got I'm going to write down my little order of operations here and it should be perfect next time. I don't know why for some reason I had to refresh the page to, uh, to get the chat to work. That was kind of strange, but yeah. So let me always ask the opening question. What's everyone working on today? Obviously I have five Blake Kings. Um, Oathstone, hello, hello. Going right in with Katie and Flesh Tone on these guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to mix the skin up a little bit and like do more skin tones than I normally do on an army because uh, it was pointed out to me by Jack and it's absolutely accurate that. 
I just only ever do white guys. Um, for no particular reason, it's mainly just to keep painting efficiency up, having one color palette. Especially when it's like Fire Slayers and that's kind of like the generic scheme for them, that kind of thing. So with these guys, we're going to have Diversity Week in the Maggotkin of Nurgle Army. And have all kinds of types and shades. Because Nurgle doesn't care about your race. He only cares that you're fat and full of poxes. Day four on a Puscoil Blight Lord. Sweet. My, my, I think my next step after I get the... Because the Blight Kings and I have their bases all ready to go. So I was trying to think like, okay, what's the next thing I'm going to build after these to kind of keep, you know, keep a plan going in my head. And uh, after reading its rules that got released uh, that everyone talked about yesterday, I am definitely doing those, uh, what are they called? The Beastmen from uh, Beast Grave set. Because GW was kind enough to send me a box. Um, obviously, I did a review of it, but uh, huge, huge for Nurgle. Blight King specifically. So, I was like, yes. much water question with the making of a mix of flesh tones do you change the armor colors to complement the models more no I want them to all have the same uniforms um, I mean it it kind of goes against the whole idea of diversity week if like the black people wear this outfit. <laughs> no. no, they all got to be on the same team. Um, I know what you mean, though, as far as modifying the outfit. I would do that for, like, um, unit to unit. So, like, having the Puscoil Blight Lords have slightly different, um, you know, armor because they're a little bit more highly elevated than normal Blight Kings, but that's, uh, that's pretty much it. We got uh, we got a lively chat today. Sweet. So if you have any um, questions for me or want to discuss a certain topic, go ahead and if you type question in all caps in the chat, it helps me see it and I will uh, jump all over that because I need discussion fodder. It was a it was an insanely busy day for me at work, so I didn't have time to kind of like prep a topic. I always like to have a few ideas, but. Um, it was just a real rough day. Deciding if I want to repaint 2,000 points worth of Flesh Eater Quartz. Woo! Woo! That's a lot of points, but... I mean, there are... There are worse reasons to hobby than having a kick-ass army. never good at getting all the fingers on a guy when he's holding a weapon. I always feel like I miss just like part of the palm or something stupid so he looks kind of derpy. Question. How many armies does Chaos have in the lore of Warhammer 40k and AOS? How many armies? Uh, I mean, if you count demons, it's literally endless denizens. Um, each uh, In 40k, each of the Chaos gods kind of lays claim to one of the legions, so there's four off the bat there. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of your questions are like for specifics, and I think uh, Games Workshop goes above and beyond to make sure that specifics are impossible. Like you asked one time how many like bloodthirsters there are, and it's like there's just no answer. Like they are infinite. 
as many as the writers require. <laughs> um, and that's just the nature of the setting is that a lot of the stuff is just undefined but purposefully. Like, with, with the intent to give you creative license to do whatever you want. Uh, I can tell you, like I said, uh, four legions fell to chaos in 40k. You know, I can tell you what the mortal races are like in AOS, but there, there's never a number given. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, let's talk about let's talk about some city stuff. I forgot about that article that got released today. I read it first thing when I got to work, and like I said, it was just a busy day, so my, my little memory got kind of jostled. Um, so, who wants to go first? Cities of Sigmar. First of all, in the chat, if we have any people who own those factions, tell me, are you excited? Why or why not? What makes you, what makes you excited? This is a channel where we talk about stuff that makes us happy, so that's what we're going to do. And while you guys are answering that, we'll pour a drink out for the units that didn't make it. Always understanding that some people are very upset, but at the same time, I think there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, let's see. What do you think they will do with ogres when they get around to them? Yeah, Jack, what do you think? Solve that one, buddy. Very busy night. Great time for a show. Oh, awesome. That's fantastic. Well, let's keep you entertained. So, one of the things they did, and I'll just chat while you all answer, but uh, one of the things they did was release a, I think chart is a strong word, but basically an image that has like, these are all the things that will be battle line in this, in this army. And, um, and they did, they did clarify like, you know, some of them are only battle line under certain conditions. And I think that was really... I think we all kind of saw that coming. They're going to be conditional battle lines. But man, oh man, am I excited for some of the options they put in there. I would not have put money on the War Hydra and the Charybdis being an option. Like, I would... I would have put that into a category of, like, nice to have, probably won't happen. <laughs> Pours out some coffee for 99% of the High Elves. Yeah, I mean, that was my army when AOS dropped. Um, and as much as uh, I get derided for hopping armies, that was a that was a good hop out of that one. Hopefully they'll get the Tomb King's treatment where they go away, but then kind of, sort of, come back. At least the the spirit of them is kept alive. That's how some people are viewing the Ossiarch Bone Reapers. I personally, I don't, I think there's some real differences in their style from the Tomb King, so I'm hesitant to call them that, but that's certainly the opinion of many. 30 different things, possible battle line. Isn't that crazy? I love it. I think it was Jack who shared this fun meme where uh, it was like the Scooby-Doo unmasking scene and like they pulled the the mask was the um, Cities of Sigmar book and underneath it was just the Order Grand Alliance book that first came out when AOS dropped. I was like, yes. Let's see. Let me, let me pull up that page here while I have stuff open, and I want to like take another look at that article. I want to see some of the things in detail. Like I said, it was it was at work. I'm surprised there aren't more um, Duarden options. There's uh, what is what is the the dual kit? I believe makes both of those units. Which, I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world, but I just thought there'd be more. Uh, 
You just realize the skin on this guy's stomach is like cracking like an egg and I just think that's so gross and awesome. Uh, let's see, um, Shu from Your Only Ones will be happy because Phoenix Temple have a way to become Battle Line. That's a project he kind of had on pause for a bit just until he figured out where, where things were going to land, which I think was a good idea uh, at the time, but now certainly is was like, oh yeah, get those guys done. That sounds awesome. What are some other standouts for me? Um, Steam Tank is a big one. Uh, I think it was... Maybe it was Vince? Uh, but I think, yeah, I think it was during their predictions video where he said they wanted, he wanted to see a, uh, like a character variant of the Steam Tank, like a tank commander kind of thing. That would be amazing. Let me get back to the chat here. Phoenix Temple isn't discontinued. Yep. Iron Breakers and Drakes. There we go. As his hammers and long beards. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm not familiar or super familiar with the uh, dispossessed kits. Never... Uh, Never gave that army a, a super long look. I probably should. That's not true. I shouldn't look at any other armies besides Maggotkin right now. So the, the lore videos that I'm planning, just off of what we've seen so far, uh, is obviously one for each city because that seems to be kind of what they're pushing you towards is picking a city and then um, as much information as I can find for each of the specific factions I'm really excited about so gross i love it uh let's see white lions are as black guards sword masters as either great swords or executioners yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of crossover especially if you can find someone with bits for dark elf stuff and kit bash old high elf things with i think that would look really cool it certainly look unique um it's it's it is definitely doable to make them look not only like you know, I mean, obviously, you could just proxy stuff. That's cool. That's whatever. I would never make anyone feel bad for that. But, I mean, like, if you wanted to go that extra mile and get, like, uh, you know, best-looking army or that kind of stuff, right? Like, you know, going a little, a little kit bashing would be huge. So, yeah, but given that White Lions got removed and Phoenix Guard didn't, then it would be ambiguous. That depends. I mean, it depends on the um, the opponent and the, the environment. Like, if you're going to, like, a, a tournament or something like that, sure, maybe be a little more stringent, ask your TO for sure. But uh, just on, like, an average day of gaming, I personally would never care if anyone asked me that. My rule of thumb when it comes to proxies is I don't generally care um, when it's not at an event, but you need to be prepared for me to ask an annoying number of times what each unit is. And if you're okay with that, I'm okay with you bring whatever you want. Because I will forget and I refuse to 
to do something stupid simply because you wanted to bring something, uh, some weird model that didn't quite fit what you're going for. So I think that sounds like a pretty fair punishment. That's entirely fair, yeah. Just annoy the hell out of them. Just annoy them so much that they're like, it is easier to get and paint an army than to play with Doug with these proxies. That's how you play 40 chess, my friends. <laughs> Swordmasters and White Lions had nearly identical War Scrolls. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of those decisions were made when they were, like, looking at their... Because they have to factor in a few things, right? You have the, the age of the mold. Like, how, how much more can this mold, for, for example, White Lions produce versus executioners when they kind of fill the same role um, you know what, what what are like sales estimates because um, they're a business nothing wrong with that and all those kinds of questions where you're just like okay if we have things that are doing pretty much the same thing it it just makes sense to kind of cut company costs and then like rules design costs i get it i don't like it but i get it That's pretty much the Doug Griggs official stance on models being retired. I don't like it, but I get it. Uh, let's see. If you have a comment that you want me to specifically um, chat about, remember to type question in the beginning so I can see it and know that it's for me. I mean, the chat's been super chatty uh, lately, and that's awesome. I like when you guys talk to each other. stuff what is your definition of proxy and has it differ from a conversion uh to me um i mean, i don't have a, a hardcore definition you know what i mean i'm sure other people do to me like a proxy is um taking either an object or another model right it doesn't doesn't actually matter what it is and saying i'm going to count this as blank um for the purposes of this game um, and the reason that's different is because it could be a salt shaker that acts as, you know, your cavalry base. Like, it doesn't have to be uh, anything sp specific to wargaming. It's because it's something that's a proxy, right? It's proxying the space of something else. Uh, when I think of a conversion, I think of someone who... It's, it's definitely a model, so someone has put work into something. Uh, and it is usually... A, and it could be a completely different different model from what's said, like, as a, as a core like the the base thing that they use to start working on stuff but at, at the end of the day it should a good conversion should accurately represent what they're trying to convey and that shouldn't be hard for your opponent to figure it out that would be my biggest thing is just it should always uh, any kind of work you do with models as far as conversions and kit bashes and all that kind of stuff it should always enhance the game and not make it more tedious and i think that when models don't clearly represent what they are and i have to ask a thousand times what something is it takes away from the game doesn't add to it uh, 
Uh, let's see. Working on my Tyranid Kill Team. Gene Stillers are pretty fun to paint. Yeah, they are. Super aggressive lunging pose. I love it. Let's see. If you're going to proxy, you should expect to answer a lot of questions and repeated questions. How do people? How do you do? People feel about third-party model equivalents? Uh, again, I think as long as they represent whatever they're trying to be well, and you understand going into purchasing them that like the limitations by that. I mean, like you can't bring this to a GW store. Every single time you go to an event, you should contact the TO. That's just you being a responsible player. Um, that kind of stuff. You know, as long as you you act appropriately um, and you don't get acting like a baby when a judge says, you know, I'd rather you didn't bring that. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's a real... That's the mark of a really cool person when someone's like, actually, I don't like that. You know what I mean? As a TO. And then you're, you're, you're cool about it. Everyone's cool. All of a sudden... The world just became a cooler place. I've only seen that done once. <laughs> Successfully. Where someone was really groovy about, like, their opponent just wasn't on board with what their their uh, model was. Because I think it was... Uh, I think it was somebody using... Like a war machine and a hordes unit to, to fill in for something else. I don't remember what it was. Unfortunately. Definitely going to convert some 40k Dark Eldar into Dark Elves. Commander set them apart. Oh, that's a fantastic. Honestly, I was super excited when I saw the new... Um, Phoenix Lord? No, the Incubi leader guy um, on the community page because he looks like he would be an amazing uh, model to have for some Dark Elf stuff. I mean, those two ranges, I think it's because the Dark Eldar, they, they're not nearly as sci-fi, like hardcore sci-fi as other stuff. They have like very like flowy and rounded edge armor. Like they could fit in the Mortal Realms, you know, as long as you do a little bit of work to like you know, make sure backpacks are trimmed off and that kind of stuff. Like, they could fit perfectly. So I just always, always like them. Doing some quick highlights on the scheme. The Clavix, yes, that's him. Question, I have two Isle of Blood, Isle of Blood Griffins. Any idea how they can be used as these days? Uh, ooh, they're not big enough to be the Phoenix dudes. Uh, let's all brainstorm. What can you use those Griffin things for? big as the phoenix uh it's it's pretty big I don't, I, don't, I don't have a size comparison i don't know uh 
let's see, how do they compare to demigriffs? I'm not, I don't think I've ever actually seen a demigriff in person, to be honest with you. I'm counting on uh, Jack to be our local free guild expert here in a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and put that peer pressure on him right now. Phoenix is on a 160mm over base. Okay. Question, have you ever painted a night haunt? If so, how did you paint it? Um, I have not painted, well, I painted like a few test models. My my wife was interested, like night haunt's the only faction that interests her at all, and she has a very non-existent interest in this game, so it was a big deal. Um, I did a test one, because she, well, she wanted it to be purple. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't get it right, and she was going through some rough stuff at work, and she just got disinterested, and I needed the room, so I actually sold off the night haunt, so. And now she's so stinking busy with her own projects that, uh, don't really have time to bring it up. How many points of Nurgle do you own for 40k? Uh, so with Death Guard, I think I'm close to a thousand points, and then I have I have like the Star Collecting box of demons. I'm not even sure what that comes out to be, to be honest with you. But that's it, and the demons will increase as I do more and more of this project. That's uh, partially why I chose Maggie Cannon, <coughs> why I held on to my Death Guard. Because I was like, no, I want to do a project, and Chaos is just so nice because you can use it on both systems. I was like, yeah, you know, or Demon specifically, yeah. Doug, contrast paint makes Night Hunt super easy. Yeah, you know, I did try them. That painting that I did do, it was before Night, um, Contrast was released, so I'm sure that would change things. Maybe if I see another good deal on Night Haunt, I'll, I'll grab it up. But it's so low on the priority list, it's like, eh. I'll wait for someone to quit the hobby and I'll swoop in. W so I love this cell shaded cell shaded stuff. My absolute favorite. The guy who does Tau stuff, and I was just like, oh, it's incredible. Question, with the new space open after GW drops some lines, what range deserves some love? Ogres. I think ogres deserve some love. Mm 
If I had to choose stuff that I would want to see, I'd want to see new ogres and I'd want to see new zombies. And the zombies I mainly want to get support for because I want to see other stuff besides uh, skeleton hordes with legions of Nagash. And I've been advocating that for a while. I think I think zombies are the key to that army being fun <laughs> for everybody. But uh, that's just me. Okay. What would you do with ogres? Um. Oh, like what would I add? I don't know what they need, honestly. I just want to see some updated sculpts that bring them into the kind of more crazy fantasy that we're in now. Okay, there's that. What's next? Next we'll do new wood. But yeah, I'm not sure of like an exact uh, unit they need. I mean, also all the wording for the war, war scrolls has to be updated. So like, there's, there's a lot going on. Complaining about legions and the gashes. So 2018. Yep, yep. Well, when your favorite army to see across the table is a Nagash army, it's easy to get uh, get past that. Zombies would be dumping crypt ghouls for a better design. I don't think so. I think they're very different. I don't think they have to be the same. Question, which other war bands are you excited for for Beast Grave? I mean, clearly I'm excited about the Nurgle one. My goodness, I want, ideally I want a super cool Sorcerer model. Because I actually really don't like the Nurgle Sorcerer model as he is. So the one that's like holding all the books in his hand, like, oh, I don't know. I would like, I'd like a really good proxy for that, or if his, you know, what he is is good, then I would be really cool with just having him. I mean, heck, if he's half as useful as the the Beast Man one, holy smokes. Question, speaking of Chaos Warriors, any ideas on adding some color to them? Uh, what do you mean, adding some color? Like, you can paint them however you want. I think black is generally going to be the, the Chaos Undivided color, though. Because it goes with everything, and... It's slimming. We know one thing about Archeon. He is worried about his size, which is why he rides a colossal beast. Make him look smaller, you know, by comparison. Pretty by proxy. Silver, then use inks. I don't mind the Crypt Ghoul kit. I'm looking back in the chat because I missed some stuff. Uh, I don't mind it. I think they accurately... I mean, I want it to be more like diverse, like more poses. Uh, and the new Warband they showed has a picture of a woman on it. That's cool because women and men can both go crazy. Why not? But yeah. 
I have two. Let's see. I'm finding, as much as I love the, the Night Lord's blue, I'm having trouble highlighting it. Did you just accuse Dorgar of being the fat friend? I did. That's not closed for sure. This bed's yeah, follow up. They are very black paint. I think about doing quarter shield, red and green. Yeah, it's cool, dude. I would say go. I mean, I'm, you're you're talking to someone who's only ever gonna say. Yeah, do it. That sounds cool. <laughs> I'm never going to be like, that's the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. Get off of my stream. This is the long, boring part of just highlighting all the little armor plates. Be honest, we need ghoul cav. We have ghouls that think they're cav. That counts. But, right? Players think they are Pegasus riders. Yes, yeah, that's what, I was, that's what my joke was about. upon us, right? I don't, know, I don't know actually when the calendar says fall starts, but I'm so excited. And part of it, this might sour your opinion of me, is because I am a basic B. And that I mean I am all about the pumpkin spice lattes. 
I, and my wife makes fun of me every single time because she's a barista or used to be a barista and knows good coffee at a fancy place. It's like, you know what? The world is full of evil and strife. I'm going to have my hot pumpkin flavored milkshake. Just entering second nice summer. Like pumpkin spice and baked goods. Ooh, yeah. You had me at pumpkin spice. I'm hoping uh, tomorrow is a big preview for the orc book. I know a lot of folks are very anxious for that. I'm actually one of them. I'm getting more excited. I want to see what they do. Because I'm in a weird place where it's just like, I don't want the same thing over and over again. Like, they're like just rehashing the same uh, orc stuff. But at the same time, it's like, but I don't necessarily want them to depart so far. So I don't know. just want something that can punch Slanesh in the face. Starbucks coffee is actually over roasted on purpose. Yes, actually I've heard that. Um, they have a corporate office up here in the Seattle area, and uh, one of my buddies works for them, and she was telling me that it's also a matter of consistency. Uh, if you cook it further than other, pe other people would, you can make it a consistent product. Question, why haven't they made Blood Tithe not reset? Because that's that's your tax for having stuff to do besides summoning. Nobody else does. The closest that anyone else has besides using their points for something else is Maggotkin bringing terrain in the board, and that's, that's it. You get the toolbox and some penalties against using it. I'm just, I'm 100% joking. I don't know. That's just my first thought.
If I could have my way, every summoning army would have a toolbox like corn, where you could function with the rules and not have to buy models. You know what I mean? Like you can use blood tide points for stuff that doesn't require you to go buy things, but that doesn't really translate the same way with the rest of them. And then Slanesh is, I think, probably the most egregious of just like, here, have a Keeper of Secrets. But I just I just lost my Keeper of Secrets. This is your console, Consolation Prize Keeper of Secrets. He's cool. He'll go with you. Oh, okay, cool. As far as when the uh, the nerf comes, I saw that comment. Um, no idea. Hope soon. That's the thing that the book is so close to being. I mean, it is a great book. It's just it's a really cool book. A lot of all good art. I think it's just the summoning table. Just needs a looky loo. Yesterday I got Matthew. I'm not going to read that, but yeah, it's a good army. Coming along, what do I got? I think two guys left. Question, I'm trying to organize a kill team tournament at my local game store. Any suggestions? I've never done like this. Uh, no, actually I have, I have absolutely nothing to say. Um, uh, I got asked to run an event in December. It'll be my first event, so I, I have no idea what I'm doing. But I said yes because I wanted to. So I don't know. I got nothing nothing to help with now, but I'll do a I'll do a video recap at some point whenever I do that one. Um one of the kind of guys who like organizes events locally um reached out to me and said like, "Hey, we want to start doing some narrative stuff. Uh would love to have uh you join in on kind of making that happen since that's my thing. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing I can tell you, at least from what I've heard from others, is you have to promote like crazy. 
you know, don't be don't be shy about talking about an upcoming event often because people will forget. Um, so just kind of go out there, like you know, your your own spokesperson. Um, and and just sell it, you know. What I mean, the, make sure everyone has accurate expectations on what they can, you know, oh, expect <laughs> uh, from the event. Um, so nothing, I don't know, nothing surprises them when it comes to the rules packets or if rules disputes happen or that kind of thing. Um, I mean, don't be afraid to say like, this is my first time running an event. I need things to be smooth. Discuss stuff with your opponent. I think the most important thing would be if things don't go well, don't be discouraged. Just document everything and then do better next time. That is pretty much what I plan to do. Bone Splitters are just overall a bad army. Hopefully they get a run in charge. I'm sick of coming, cunning ruck. Well, you've played them more than me, so I don't know. I can't argue that one. I don't know. But I love their aesthetics and I want them to do well. Like, as much as I like the idea of running all the green skins together, you know, the, not green skins, but just the the big orc boys together. I think that is a cool idea. I'm glad they went with there. I, I do firmly want Bones, Blitters, and Iron Jaws to work well separately. Now, I think <laughs> Doug Con <Conwen. laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I'll call it, too. I am that vein. Doug Con. I have a, a dream for an event where um, uh, basically I want to call it Destined for a Cure. I've talked about this with, with, uh, with Jack before. And so the way the rules for this fictional event that I'm, I'm making up in my head work, okay? So imagine this. Imagine this is a rules packet for you, friends. You can, you can build your army according to allegiance abilities. So like if something says like, you know, Judicators are battle line in Stormcasts, only armies type thing. You can build your army that way, but you don't get any allegiance abilities. Okay, nothing special. Um, the best you can do is something from like maybe like a storm host. I haven't decided if I want to let those fly. Um, so you can build your army with your allegiance, but you don't get any benefits from it. But when you show up to your event, you roll nine destiny dice. And basically the way it works is everybody gets the Zinch ability of having nine destiny dice. And it's a fundraising narrative event, so you can buy more, buy meaning you donate to the cause. And uh, with that you can increase your destiny pool. So the way it basically works, if you just want to come and play the game here and there, you just your entry fee gets you nine destiny dice. And you can carry um, those across your games. But... Um, obviously the incentive is to buy more and donate to a good cause. I always thought that would be a super fun idea. Because for as much as, I mean, and I mostly came up with it when people were really complaining about Slanesh being just way too good. And not Slanesh, uh, Zinch being way too good. Um... It's a little less relevant now because no one's complaining about Zinch, <laughs> but it's a little behind the times, but I still think it's a fun idea at the core of it. Two plus tough con has a nice ring to it. It'd be cool. It'd be a lot to organize. Okay, I think we're good. Yes, that's the point. Is uh, Omniphage? It's going to be brutal against some armies, and and it'll it'll definitely hurt 
others. Um, it's weird because, you know, the only time it falls apart is with summoning. Because, like, summoning is always tied to an allegiance ability. So I don't know how I would how I would do that. That's where things get murky. Because I thought of this, like I said, when, when Zinch was popular. And that was before the Magatkin book. Was when Zinch was, like, in ascendancy, right? So, it's just a thought. It still needs to be workshopped a bit. I will say that. And this and this. Just looking for my skin tone here. Speaking of Zinch, they seem like the most likely Chaos faction to get spruced up. That's the rumor I've heard. Fleshy Records do fine, I think. Oh, that's true. That's true. I forgot about that. Fleshy Records are a War Scroll based. I didn't think about that. That's a very unique thing that they have. I mean, not that you can really turn off Allegiance abilities anyway. You know, it's all still more efficient than casting a spell to summon stuff like we did back in the day. But that's an interesting thought I hadn't come up with. Doug, how do you stop playing World of Warcraft Classic and start painting Warcry stuff? Honestly, I'm the wrong person to ask because uh, my wife was out of town and in addition to doing all this content, I cranked out uh, Wolfenstein New Order because <laughs> I got addicted to that game real quick. Zinch is still really good. I think it is. I haven't seen it around. I don't know anyone. Jack, do we have anyone who plays locally who plays Zinch? Oh, I guess. Uh, no. I don't know. I can't think of anyone. You know what book really needs a look-see? Maggotkin. I'm just kidding. I just say that because I'm playing now. They really need a buff up in power. Barely playable as a faction right now. I just played nine parchments with girlfriend. Great nine hour grind on a set. I can't I can't do any game that goes beyond like three hours. I'm like, eh. You never play AOS, of course you didn't see it. You know, I'm just gonna say that I'm here being a hobby hero, doing my best to make the world a better place for the internets. You know, not all the celebrities have the luxury of going to every event in the tri-state area. <laughs> uh, you ever play, you ever watch them play Battle Boys of the Yogg cast? Nope. Nope, nope, never heard of that. Make the transition and paint your elves like night elves.
So he's really demoralizing to play against Zinch. If you, well, yeah. I don't think I've actually seen somebody go heavy into the horrors as far as like summoning stuff goes. Interesting though. You still never play AOSO? That's why all your meta references are from last year. <laughs> well, every time I try to play, you guys want to record stuff. It's like, no, we can just play a game. We can play a game just to like, like learn how to play the game. Okay, I'm making a, I'm making a hobby commitment. So everybody, listen up. When this army is ready, I'm gonna I'm gonna say built, not even 100% painted. I will go to more events. I really should. I know that I should. I even have a great friend who berates me for not going to them. Thanks, Brent. And I also have Jack here. And uh, yeah, I should definitely go to events. Let's play Saturday. Uh, what am I doing? Um, I'm going to give you a tentative yes. Tentative yes, because Jess comes back home on Thursday. I just need to make sure that she's cool with everything. But she should be. I, don't, I can't imagine her having a problem. Oh, great. Thaumaturge is still one of my favorite models. Has such fun rules. That is that is a really cool model. I never got around to painting one. I might just grab one just to paint at some point once I get this stuff kind of squared away. Maybe even convert him as a demon prince for Nurgle. It'd be kind of fun. But he is um, he's a legitimately cool model. For sure. Events aren't for everyone. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a... Uh... But I had fun. I mean, well, I had... Not the first time where I only played one game. That was a real bummer. But um, the other times I had a good time. The one in Bellingham where it was a... A three-round event. One day, three rounds. Something like that. That was a blast. Take your Blight Kings and wreck some fools. Mm, I think they're going to be subject to that that the most uh, reliable of all rules when it comes to Warhammer, which is the second you put your painstakingly well-painted model on the table, it dies. So I think that's going to happen a few times. Um, but after that, I think they'll be really good. <laughs> Let's grab... The one I won, I don't recall that. No, the, I went to one. It was the one where uh, like all of us jammed inside of your van. I had a great time. My first opponent was kind of, uh, it was the Fire Slayer player and he was a little bit hand wavy, but the second two games I had were awesome. Did you win that one? There's the one at Mob, but I was thinking of the one at in Bellingham. The one at Mob was down to me and you in the finish line. Actually, yeah, this will work. The only Zinch that spark joy is the Zangors. Zangors are legit. They're cool models.
I won both. My gosh. Yes, everybody, stop what you're doing and acknowledge the fact that Jack won both. Everyone, golf clap. <laughs> no, you did good. Brought much honor to your family. Did you win? Wait, no, it's right. You did win the one we're at Mob. Number nine, ITC. I'll have you know I'm most likely in last place for about six factions on ITC. So, you know, quantity is a quality all its own. <laughs> Who's this Doug Griggs guy? He's a turd in nine different factions. <laughs> I've never seen a dud like this before. His derp levels over 9,000 in Skaven and in Chaos. Doug, you were sort of playing Skaven, but with Chaos Warriors as battle line. Yes. You couldn't get enough Skaven. Yep, that's what it was. Chaos Warrior meta confirmed. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, they get used more more and more every time I, I look at like lists and stuff like that on the BCV app. Just because, I, I don't know why, there's this idea that like, and, and Jack, you can attest to this too. Someone on, on one of the Rerolling One videos um, commented like, man, I wish you guys played like real hardcore tournament lists because this guy over here is using uh, Liberators and they're just awful. Like, but misunderstanding the point of like liberators are literally the cheapest battle line option in um, Stormcast right now. Uh, I don't know if they still are, but the, at the time they were. So it's just like people just lose sight of like what they're saying, right? Like something is garbage because it's not sequiturs. They're just like you got you got to get a grip, dude. Like there's other good stuff out there. Watchmaster, how am I tonight? I'm doing well. I'm just kind of chilling after a very, very long day at work. And so it feels nice to just chat with people. Sitting around praising Jack for doing so well at all his events. As he's gone far out of his way to remind us of, you know, praise him for his many accolades. It's been a great night. <laughs> he's going to beat the crap out of me. All right. So I'm doing right now is just throwing on some Magos purple in all the little cracks and crevices to make it look like his skin's all fractured and gross. Do not foresee myself beating uh, Jack with my expired can of whoop ass, as you put it, which I love. That's actually my new favorite way of describing that. <laughs> mm, no skin. Okay. I already told Chew about it. You'll get credit in the bat rip. <laughs> don't, don't bother. It's all good. I'm imagining a Skaven Storm Fiend list getting swarmed by 100 Liberators. Well, that's the thing, yeah. So, like, I, mean, I'm, I kind of got off track there. I'm sorry. But the guy was, like, um, poking fun at, at Jack's list because he wasn't taking sequiturs. Like, specifically, like, Liberators are terrible, sequiturs are just better, but they're more expensive. And so my point in saying all of that originally was to comment on the fact that, like, Chaos Warriors are making a comeback because they are just dirt cheap. And you know what? Sometimes... Sometimes you just need dirt cheap so that you can bring disgustingly filthy rules-wise everywhere else. <laughs> you have beat me several times. I keep track in my diary. <laughs> 
Today was a bad day. I lost to Doug. Ready for the airing of grievances? Oh, your book of grievances, Jack. <laughs> uh, what's next? Oh, the khaki. Put the khaki covers out. There we go. Yep, 90 point, squ uh, point squads are somewhat durable. It's exactly what they are. It's all they are. And you know, it's all they need to be. When I did um, that Skaven list they were just talking about where I took uh, basically a Skaven army, but I didn't have enough battle line, so it was just a bunch of Skaven crap and like three units of, of uh, Chaos Warriors. Um, maybe it was two units, because I did have one thing of one brick of clan rats, but something like that. Um, it's exactly what I did. Yeah, I just used them to shield uh, the cannons and um get in the way basically and they did a great job they're great at getting in the way it's like what they do here doesn't keep a running tally of their failures and disappointments and whisper them to fall asleep. <laughs> a 360 game that the chaos campaign had you take control of a skaven tribe as a chaos warlord and they work side by side yeah. Oopa. what did i just do i feel like yeah somehow he dodged all the paint sweet For the first time, I actually considered buying one of the GW like painting handles. Cause so I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna be doing these guys, like, there's a lot of detail in these dudes. Like, I, I spend enough time on them to warrant putting them on a base, or even if I just sticky tack them to to something. And then, of course, the last time I was in there was the story anniversary, so I got all flustered because there's a huge line and I forgot to grab it. Like, oh, the one time I remembered. Never think of that thing. So Doug, at some point GW also thought that was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I, you know, go from trend to trend reinventing them as I go, but it seems to happen, you know, it's whatever. Did da Jack's list even include a Lord Arcanum? Because if so, that's even more points you need to spend for sequiturs. 
No, no, it didn't. No, no, it was that shoe cast list. Like nothing in that entire list screamed like, "Oh yeah, sequiturs would be great here." I'm sure you'd take them if you had the points, but you know, when things are tight. Cheap is cheap. Are good. I think Libra's great. For the same reason that Chaos Warriors are great. You know what's awesome? Four up save, rerolling one shield and two wounds. Nothing not good about that. But then I've always been the, of the persuasion that you should just take whatever you want. <laughs> if you like it, then it's the best model there is. Which uh, I was told recently is weirdly enough not how you win tournaments. So that's, you know, that's strange. Who knew? I'm pretty sure my my uh, advice to people is pretty much the equivalent of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh channeling the heart of the cards, where it's just like, if I just believe in this enough, it'll be good, right? <laughs> and it's like, no. No, that's the worst unit in your book, man. Yeah, no, but I like it. This guy left. Oh my gosh, sorry, seven. My goodness. Since I squatted some dwarfs, I'm hoping I'm way more into the remaining dispossessed. Yeah, I like them. I like the heavy armored guys. Pirate Meta confirmed. Luke Stone got in there while the getting was good. Now you can be super OG. Oh yeah, I was the first pirate. Okay. 
question. Halloween is coming up. What's everyone's favorite candy or treat? Oh, that's a great question. Favorite candy or treat? Mm, Twix bars are my, my weakness. I haven't had one in a long time because I've been trying to, over time, cut out sugar for the most part. Outside of the occasional alcoholic beverage. And yesterday I treated myself to some M&Ms. But, uh, yeah, Twix is my, my kryptonite. I'm a fan of Ritter Sport and Mars Bars. I have never heard of Ritter Sport. Sucker for Kit Kats. Kit Kats are good. They're a classic. Yes, yesterday I... Uh, I made 12 year old Douglas jealous by having a breakfast of coffee and M&Ms with Jack at the uh, squat meet. So I'm confused how I run elves. Can I do that or do I have to base it on city? You know, we're still waiting for some details. Um, the, I, what they said was that um, the star collecting box will be useful in any city, so you should be able to pretty much just do whatever you want. But hold off. Uh, don't take my word. I mean, you don't have to hold off on anything, but don't take my word as gospel until I have the book. So we're gonna be able to make our own cities. The the uh, what we know so far is no, no, nothing's been leaked that you can make your own city. Just the existing ones, particularly the ones from the game expansion Firestorm back in the day. Boss like fist, I agree. Yeah, the conversion, I mean, for the people, I think it's going to be a cool book no matter what, the Seas of Sigmar thing. I think it's going to be a cool book no matter what, but I think it's it's going to be particularly awesome for those people who really get into it. Like, for the folks who like, yeah, I'm from Phoenicium, this is our thing, I painted everything to match it, you know what I mean, and go like super heavy into like that's where I think we're going to see some really cool stuff that I'm very excited about. What do barnacles look like? Let's take a look. Oh good, I'm not far off, okay. Kinda white, it's about witch flesh I think. Okay, okay. I could put them, so every model in this army is going to have um, some custom stuff to them. And so for these guys, cause they have these nice big fat broad surface panels, uh, I put on some barnacles out of green stuff. So I'm just... Here we 
you a pellet witch flesh. Making sure that they look like barnacles. <laughs> Barnacle removal videos. Oh, I haven't checked that out. I will go check it out. The most satisfying videos I've found on YouTube so far that are just out there is the guy who restores Hot Wheel cars. It's my favorite. Doug, pretty sure that's wrong. Beast of Chaos. No, 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 no. Omniphage. What I'm saying is... You can you can play as whatever you want. What I'm saying is there's no like, um, like Space Marines now have a new table for creating your own custom chapter that is not related rules wise at all to any of the other ones. That's what I'm talking about. You can play as whatever you want. You, you can narratively do whatever you want. I'm talking about like a full open ended rules toolbox to do question mark. <laughs> Sorry, I should have made that clear. Uh, boss life is I am starting an all squid gloom spite army figured it'd be a funny army boss's name is gonna be Naznik I love it the the only part of gloom spite gets that appeals to me is the idea of a squiggle inch and that's because I think those models are awesome Beast Chaos has make your own hurt. No, what, what, what was being said was that you can in narratively call your herd wherever you want to call them. Oh no, my cat's freaking out. Okay, so yeah, I can um, I can make my own herd called like, you know, the Derp Sons and I can use the rules from Gabe Spawn, but the, I'll count them as Derp Sons kind of thing. That's what that's what the confusion was. Every once in a while, my cat just like has a mini panic attack and it's just like freaks the heck out, like something terrible just happened, like some grizzled war vet just being like, "I'm gay ultra," and then bolts across the house at full speed. <laughs> Yeah, so you would still be using the Gave Spawn rules, 100%. Exactly. Yes, you are right. Playing keyword bingo. Um, what's left for these guys? Let's do, let's do something fun on this guy's shell on his back.
And Nurgle Army is going to be uh, twice born, Bile Piper, Slimex, 15 Chaos Warriors for Battle Line, 3 Beast of Nurgle, and a Mercil Nurgle M Menagerie Battalion. Okay, yeah, right on. That sounds fun. It sounds like a lot of dudes. Jack asks if anyone is going to Las Vegas Open. Not I, but I encourage everyone to go. So what I'm doing now, I'm just doing this as an experiment. Might backfire. I don't know. We'll find out. So this shell, if you guys haven't seen this particular Blight King, I took a Blight King and I put a um, seashell in his back and then green stuff it so it looks like it's growing out of him. And so all I did for that was contrast and Magos purple. And that's why it kind of has that little like purple slight hue to it. Um, but I wanted to make it look special somehow. And so on top of that Magos purple, I put the color shift paint. Um, so I had like this metallic blue to purple type thing going on over the almost pink-like look that was there before. So I don't know, interesting. Uh, when is LVO? I don't remember. Let's see. Oh, a few questions popped in all at once. Cool. Let me hamper through these real quick. Um, Gonzalo, have you ever played any other war game besides Warhammer? Yes, I actually got into the hobby with War Machine and Hordes. Um, and I played that for, I think, two years? I had a great time. And then I moved to the the beating heart of um, War Machine and Hordes in Seattle and realized that um, everyone out here is no fun. I had more fun in Iowa <laughs> with my friends. But it uh, turns out when you're near the epicenter, the mecca of that game... Uh, it's not great, so I moved away from that one. I played 40k a little bit. I have tried other miniatures games. The thing is, I find with a lot of miniature games, is that the companies that are producing them don't own the intellectual property for the game itself. So, for example, think like Fantasy Flight having the intellectual property for X-Wing. At some point, Disney's going to be like, yo, let me just slide that back, you know what I mean, and, and take that from them. So I just never got as invested, whereas Games Workshop and Privateer Press also own the intellectual property for their respective things. And it just helps me get more excited. So, yeah. Hope that answers your question. I am open to stuff. It's just I don't want to get invested in a game and then all of a sudden it gets no support because the property owner is just like, nah. Let's see. Boss like this, yeah, squigs are awesome. I'll make a squiggly Bretonia. Nice. It's in the end of January. Okay, cool. Uh, Omniface, so you're from Texas, lived in Iowa. Yeah, so basically, um, I have lived just about everywhere. I was born in Oklahoma. I was raised until I was 14 in New Jersey. And when I was 14, my mom and I moved to San Antonio, Texas, where I went through most of my high school time. Oh, all of my high school time and uh, some of my middle school. Um, and then from there, I graduated and then went to a school in Missouri. Um, met my now wife. She's born and raised in Iowa. So when I graduated, I was like, hey, we've been dating for quite a while. Let's see where this goes. So I followed her up and um, got an apartment up in Iowa. We lived there for several years where she finished out school and then um, over that time we got married and then she got a job straight out of college and uh, moved out here so for that job. So yeah, I've been everywhere. I have been a rather nomadic person. Let me grab some bases. We're going to start attaching these guys. <coughs> GW's Lord of the Rings cries in the dust. Yeah, it's exactly what I'm thinking. Like, I'm... Um... 
I think about that all the time when I see people praising uh, Lord of the Rings. I'm like, it's just gonna go away at some point. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's, it's not like a hot property like Star Wars, where it's like, at some point it'll go away. But I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Are you fleeing terrible crimes, or does this get awkward when you have sold armies every person you know and have to change state? Pretty much the second now. Um, so my mom is originally... Oh, we. Can, here, here's the ultimate biography of Doug Griggs, if you guys are curious. My mom is actually born and raised in New Jersey. She... I don't know why she ever went to Oklahoma, to be honest with you. She kind of doesn't talk about her past much. And... Um, met my dad... And so that's why I was born in Oklahoma. And they broke up. They were never actually married. Um, and so she went home to her family afterwards in New Jersey. So that's where I was raised with my grandma. Um, and then uh, I have two half-brothers. So my mom, before she had me, had two sons from a different man. Um and they were in the Air Force. Their dad was in the Air Force and they traveled with them. And so when they came back to the States, uh, they were stationed in Turkey for a little bit and then they came back to the States. And so my mom said, hey, you know, you guys are getting older. You don't have much time with your brothers. So wherever they go, we're gonna go there so you can get to meet your brothers a little bit and kind of grow up together, at least, you know, throughout my high school years. And I was like, sure, sounds good. So they got stationed in the Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. So that's why we went there. Um, what else? What's next? And then, yeah, I got a scholarship at a college. So that's why I went to the school in Missouri. And then, yeah, I explained my wife and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. No horrible crimes, although I have traded an inordinate amount of armies between War Machine and Hordes and 40K and Age of Sigmar everywhere I've been, so I probably should move on to greener pastures at some point soon. I need to find my next Jack, who supplies me with unpainted models, and I return the favor with, with painted ones. Scholarship for football? No, actually, I got... Fun fact about Doug, I got a scholarship for competitive theater. Because in Texas, um, they have competitive theater because if, you know, in Texas, you got to compete at something. You know what I mean? Even if you're a mamsy pansy art dude, you got to compete at it. So your parents aren't embarrassed to have you. So, um, yeah, so I was in a competitive theater where basically you get 60 minutes to set up, act out, and tear down a play. Um, and so we went, we did the devil's disciple and I got an award for acting and a scholarship came with it. So that is, that is my achievement. <laughs> I am, which is funny cause I was actually only in theater for one year. It was my senior year. I needed one more fine arts credit. And then the theater teacher looked at me knowing I have not acted at all. And I was just like, you're a big guy. I need a big guy. And so like, yeah, sure enough, looking around the theater, like everyone else, like the highest, next tallest dude was like 5'8". And so uh, I played any position of authority um, for the that year of high school plays. I was like the constable in one. I was a sergeant in another. So yeah. <laughs> You were in debate and forensics, right on, right on. My only, if I could go back and do it all again, I would do golf. Cause like, I went, went, in my senior year, I figured out how easy of a ride golf is for a scholarship in Texas. And I was like, oh man, I've made all the wrong, all the wrong choices. Is that just passionately monologuing at each other until one of you screams uncle? <laughs> yes. That is how the, the theater uh, competition works. I bet you would make an amazing Hodor. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I was, yes, I was everything like Hodor. 
for our school. All right, just got a few more little odds and ends to touch up here. I want to apply some washes to a few more wounds. If I had to pick one big guy role to do and I would that I would love is like something like Hagrid from Harry Potter. I don't even like Harry Potter. I just like Hagrid. Because he's a big guy that never really gets villainized. You don't see many of those in Hollywood. <laughs> but yes, my... My poor mother, she had three tall boys. So I am six foot three. I am the smallest of my brothers. And the only thing she ever wanted was someone to sit and to watch football with because she is a football fanatic. And all three of her sons hate sports. <laughs> and so the closest she got was me in competitive theater. And, uh... She was good. She was she was a real sport about it. You know, she came to everything and she was just like, this is the closest I'm going to get to being in a set of bleachers, so I guess I'll come. <laughs> and it was really super funny. Because, like, she would, like, make those kinds of jokes to other parents, but, like, other parents are, like, legit proud of their children. <laughs> And so they would be like, ha, 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 what? What do you mean you're not obsessively happy about your kid being a theater nerd? Six foot three, I assumed that rerolling one crew were all pocket sized. <laughs> Question. What do you think would be a good armor color for Nurgle based in Gur? That's an interesting one. I hadn't thought about that one. I was thinking bone color, but I'm worried it will all be too monotone. <coughs> um, it depends on how you do the skin. Um, amber would be a cool one, as Mogwai Man just put it. Um, in Gur. I mean, you can also go for like... Because uh, bone looks like different colors, so like uh, if it's like super aged, it almost takes on a brown. I think fossils, right? That kind of that brown hue, that could be good, especially if you have, if you have a lighter skin underneath. Um, you could go. Grr. Yeah, I mean, depending on how much you want to do with green stuff, you can add a lot of furs and go browns. Um, Yeah. Personal question, do you know your dad? Uh, I have met him since. I met him when I was 14. Uh, and it was, a, it was a, you know, 14 is difficult for anyone, no matter what kind of family you have. So it was a lot of self-discovery and becoming a person, that kind of thing. Um, so I met him then. We kind of fell out of contact and we've... Uh, he's kind of a strange man. I think he has a lot of regrets. We don't know each other super well. Every couple of years, he'll kind of come into my life and be like, hey, let's start a relationship, and it kind of won't go anywhere. Um, yeah, that's the cycle there is. He just, it's just a cycle every once in a while. I think he feels a little tinge of regret about decisions he made, and uh, comes in my life a little bit, and then kind of fades away, and that's just how it goes. For a long time, I was just very, uh, very hurt and very upset. But you know, I mean, it's not like I've those feelings are still there. But I've uh, since I've gotten older, I've been much more able to be like, you know, but yeah, but like these things made me the man I am. So it's like, do I like me? I kind of like me. Depends on the day sometimes.
never used inks. I've actually never used full inks either. So I want to get some of this. Mago's Purple is by far one of the best contrasts they made. And it's perfect for like those really gross little nooks and crannies of people on like the muscle and the fat just to add a little bit of color in there. use GW okay yeah, yeah. Uh, I like Playhouse stuff Playhouse stuff is, is pretty darn cool I haven't uh, tried it out all, all as much as I want to but uh, yeah You're awesome, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. That's kind of you. If you stream long enough, you get the layers peeled back on this big, <laughs> big Shrek onion. Me, yeah, it's me. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, um, I, I learned at a very early age to not be ashamed of something. And if you are ashamed of it, you shouldn't be doing it. That's kind of like the the operating motto of my childhood. Um, and you know, like. My, my story with my dad is based upon decisions that have nothing to do with me, so I don't care. You know, that's all between my mom and him. Because I learned, like, I remember I, I said before, like, my mom doesn't talk about her past very much, where I think shame has, has defined her to the point where she can't have conversations about certain parts of her life, and I have always found that to be very sad. And it's like, I don't want to be like that. And I know that I have viewers that are also hurting from broken families and that kind of stuff. So it's like, just talk about it. Talk about anything you want. The only weights we carry are the ones we choose. Uh, let's see. Too much stuff. Uh, it is a trope. Uh, have a barrel of oranges aboard a ship to prevent scurvy since yours is a Nurgle crew. Will you make the barrel of infected oranges? That's super funny you say that, Grant, because I'm actually, um, I do have plans. So for the demons, if you, <laughs> my search history is so messed up. Um, so I looked up a whole bunch of people with super advanced scurvy and uh, it basically just tears your mouth apart. It looks like you're becoming a zombie from the mouth first. Um, so all of the demons were going to have scurvy. Uh, but no, I had not thought of actually putting like a, a thing of fruit or something. That's a good idea. I should do that. Yeah, the, the demon scheme, if you haven't seen it, that I'm going for. I've only painted Nurgling so far, but uh, it's going to be like super, super um, pale, like almost like dead fish white kind of thing um, with purple in the in the recesses. Um, a thinned out Magos purple is perfect for that. And then build up with a few more colors. But anyway, yeah, blood for the blood god and, and kind of mangle the skin up around their face and their mouth in particular to make it look like that I think would be really good. And so now we're at the final part where I'm just looking over each model to see what I missed. Because I always assume that I missed something. Let me throw a little bit more metallic on this guy's shell. <clears throat> Are you going to have plunder and booty on board? Well, uh, for objective markers, I got these guys. Uh, these came from the GW kit. They're on, I think, 
50 or 60 mils. I can't remember which these are. Um, and they're treasure chests. This one's full of bottles that can paint as rum, and this one's full of gold. So, yeah, dude. There you go, barrels of gin and tonic. Heck yeah, dude. So, because um, part of the thing for, um, so we have a local guy, Evan, who, who ran a really great um, event that focused on hobby and stuff like that. Um, and so one of his things was if you have custom objective markers. So I was hoping to make two or three um, to be super cool. So I put them all on the same size base. I mean, I know they're a little bit bigger than normal ones. It's not too much bigger than a poker chip, really. But um, yeah, doing all the kind. Of, I'm going to Nurgle file all of them, make them gross. The British invented gin and tonic for malaria. <laughs> Mix me up with our gin and tonic R2. That's a that's a deep cut into the past right there. <laughs> the zombie man, part of the shit, part of the crew. Yeah, actually, I forgot to talk about this. So at the... Oh, maybe I did talk about it yesterday. At the... Um, uh, trade show thing we were at yesterday, the swap meet. Um, I'm gonna start doing the the rust effects on the weapons and stuff while I'm chatting. Um, there was a guy who makes 3D printed boats, and they're like big, two and a half foot long, about this wide, just like big old things for like role playing and storytelling and whatever you want to use them for. And um, I asked him, you know, it was, it's, he said it was like 250 for a boat. And I was like, okay, that's not, I mean, it's not terrible. They're really nice quality. Um, I'm fine with that. And I uh, was asking a question about how to get it made. So basically what I plan to do is I'm going to wait until the next, um, in three months we have our next swap meet. I'm going to hit them up. I'm going to grab one of those boats and I'm going to nurgle fire the crap out of it. But... So I'll have a ton of extra um, plague bearer bits and that kind of stuff, and I'm going to mold demons into the sides of the ship, like along with a bunch of barnacles and that kind of thing to make it like they're a part of the ship. So I'm excited about that project. Wait, why are we... Why is this playing Christmas music? That was so weird. I just have it on the um, the the generic like uh, the same thing I always do like the the Google Hangout music and that was very weird. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. The person I want to meet is the guy who first makes rum and coke. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, comments aren't appearing in the top left. You know the bits that are supposed to be recorded. Comments aren't appearing in the top left. Yeah, um... Actually, a good thing you say that. I might have to adjust this. So, um, thank you for pointing that out. I didn't even think about that. Uh, basically, for whatever reason, um, with this new YouTube setup, I might get rid of that little box because for some reason it's not feeding the comments into um, my broadcasting software like it used to. It's a different setup that they have now. So I will definitely get rid of that box so it's not just annoying black space. Thank you so much for, for pointing that out. I appreciate it. Nurgle is your god and the Christmas music is scary. Sorry about that. Roman Coke was invented by in Cuba. I did not know that. Okay. Here's the thing. Alcohol is a whole nerddom. Like, it's it's a whole hobby. And I didn't realize that until I moved out here. And there's all these Seattleite nerds doing craft beers and that kind of stuff. I was just like, oh, yeah. 
give me a Bud Light. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then people are like, um, excuse me? You drink what? We don't, we only have Rainier beer out here, my friend. And it's like, uh, no, nah, people have Bud Light out here, but. I, I was a little taken back by the amount of, uh, choices this way. Anyone ever read The Wheel of Time? I have not. Really is I don't drink myself. I don't drink very much, to be honest with you. Like, I I bought when my wife uh, went home to see her family. I picked up like a six pack of bottles of, of Bud Light, and I've maybe had two. I think. I you know my my doctor never believes me when I go in to see him because he's like you know you know they have to ask do you drink alcohol that kind of stuff for medication. I was like not really, dude. He's like you're telling me you're. 30 years old, 30 years young and doing all this stuff and like, you're not drinking? Like, no, not really. I have enough mental health problems when I'm sober. I don't need to add alcohol. <laughs> Question of the four books announced, Cities, Warclans, Ma Tribes, and Bone Daddies, which one are you looking forward to leading the lore for? Oh, as far as like in order, I'll put them in order for you. Uh, Cities of Sigmar is absolutely number one, 100% without question. Um, beyond that, Bone Daddy's is second because I want to know what Nagash is up to. And I love the idea of the constructs. Um, like they're, they're not skeletons, they're constructed into stuff to do specific tasks. That's cool. Uh, next would probably be some Ma, Tri Ma Tribes is next. And then War Clans is last. Yeah, that's how I would do that. Not that I'm not excited. I mean, I'm excited for all four of them, but um, you know, War Clans I think is different because we've already had those two books. You know what I mean? Like, I know they're not going to change fundamentally what a Bone Splitter is. They're not going to change fundamentally what an Iron Jaw is. But they'll probably weave some cool extra stories to bring them together. That's awesome. I'm excited for that. Just not nearly as much as I'm excited for uh, new stuff, right? So the alcohol helps you ignore your mental health problems. Exactly. Exactly. It keeps this ship afloat. <laughs> they added more to orcs it's lacking uh, i think I'm, I'm curious to see how they integrate bone splitters with iron jaws because i think combined there's some cool stuff like there's there's a lot going on it just depends on how combined they can be you know what i mean if, it, if it's something as simple like with uh what are they glimpse by gits where it's like yeah, and, you know, you can take some spires if you want. Like, that's not the right kind of integration. <laughs> I want stuff where it's like, yeah, and this spider guy, get, you know, can really, really help the Moon Clan Grotz. And, you know, that kind of, like, putting the, the synergies together, I think, would be a really cool thing. Especially because, like, you know, I want the... 
uh, what is it, the weird knob shaman to like be good for everybody. Like just universe, like this is just a good orc to have around. <laughs> Give me Doom Divers. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think they were terrible when they were made. That's the problem. It's just an old book. <clears throat> that Doug the spider shaman gives minuses that's true that's true I more meant like <clears throat> I don't I just don't feel like the keywords interplay a whole lot I mean I, I hope my, my point was made even though I got some things wrong but just I, I feel like there there are three cool factions but I don't feel like they're one unified army <clears throat> sorry my throat got all clogged Had an idea for new brute like for the bone splitters. We'll be flinging rocks at people. That'd be fun. And we can call them Rock Gut. No, I'm just kidding. Shut it down. No rock guts. Big Stabbers are the elite unit for Bone Splitters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I want their War Scrolls to be rewritten so that more boys are the elite unit like they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be the craziest. Qu question, any news on the podcast? Uh, my podcast? Uh, I was I was supposed to record an episode with the patron uh, this last weekend, but uh, I had to fly Jess out, so I was kind of weird with my plans, and then he had uh, unexpected guests come over. So, uh, we have a topic, we're going to talk all about Warcry and the expansions, but no, uh, no set time yet, but we are working on it. I forgot rock guts are a thing. <laughs> Clogging throats, new war band name, do it, take it, cheers. Just looking for good allegiance abilities from ogres. But let me ask you this. How do you define good, W. Soren? I'm curious. Because I define good as flavorful. But that could be very different from defining good as effective, right? I I think Slanesh leans more towards the effective than flavorful. I guess the way they accrue points is, is pretty flavorful. But I don't know. The summoning on that rapid level is not necessarily... Uh, Hannah, pretty excited for cities, but still would love to see that capitalist steampunk door and get a major update. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm hoping there's enough battalions to kind of make them be able to run on their own. Uh, boss Lag Fist, not sure if you connected. If you responded to my last message. Um, if you ask it again, I will respond to it now. I'm scrolling up and I don't see anything from you in a good long while so go ahead and ask it again well like any oh yeah yeah that's fine to have uh, any I'm just I'm just more saying that like you know people can sometimes get disappointed in a book when it doesn't live up to their expectations so you just gotta, gotta really think about what you're what you need from a book to be happy is my point. Just 
going through and adding the nihilic oxide to stuff. Making everything look nice and gross. This is good, man. We got a lot of stuff done tonight. I didn't realize how detailed these models were. Are you guys looking forward to the Bone Reaper guys? Are we looking forward to them? Yeah, yeah. More armies is better. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure in our group who's gonna get them. Um, I've already said I'm, I'm not super into the aesthetic. Like, that's not true. I love the idea <clears throat> of the uh, the manufactured bad guys and that kind of stuff. I love it. Um, but I, it's just not an army like that. I think interests me. Death as a whole just doesn't super intrigue me. But um, I'm excited for the lore. My goodness, I'm excited for the lore, and also to see what people do with stuff. You know, the thing is, is like you can get excited for the way an army looks, but to me, what is honestly most exciting is when you get it in the hands of some skilled mo uh, converters, and it takes on an entirely new life. We saw that with Deepkin. We saw it with Ko. Um, just stuff that the the people making the model just never even considered. All of a sudden, looks incredible. So let's see here. Grant, question: Have you decided what specific style of locomotion your pirate? ship is based on sailing rowing steam powered no i have not i have not um jack suggested having the plague bearers be like in a rowing um pose and that'd be fine i just don't want i don't want to feel like i have to have a ton of them do that because i don't want it to be repetitive um but the idea of building a giant steam gross thing sounds kind of awesome i gotta think about how i would achieve that Um, that could certainly be cool. Uh, see a lot of bone splitters in my future for weapons. I can use them on my Nurgle. Yeah, dude. And those that box, just buy one. And before you buy any more, just see how many bits you get. Because that thing, the bone splitters box, is brimming with bits out the nose it is like the best i love it uh, my favorite thing from orcs in 40k and aos is i love the big jaws how they have their mouth and that big jaw kind of encased around it and bone splitter kit has some of those oh it's so good it's just so good Just need the cannons that lead belches are hip shooting to be better. <laughs> Legion of Calcium is a better name. I love it. Uh, John, I'm already thinking from an air perspective about how the Ossiarch Bone Reapers will complement my existing death armies. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things like you see the models. I don't, it's, this is just for me personally. I don't know if it's the same for you, but I see the models and I get excited about the lore possibilities. Um, and I've already had people ask, like, how do I fit these in? It's just like, I don't, I don't know anything about them to, to tell you how to do anything. I don't know. I, I know as much as everybody else. So it's like that weird pattern where you're so excited for the aesthetic of an army, but you're still trying to figure out how it actually fits into stuff. It's a weird place to be. Uh, let's see. Push through the water by thousands of nurglings. Oh, for the bolt, the boat's uh, propulsion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and I think the last thing I need is some Nurgle's rot. Just to solidify that this stuff is gross AF. Uh, I have it powered by Plague Monks running on a wheel to turn the engine. Oh, that's kind of funny. I don't know. I kind of, I do kind of like the idea of 
Um, making a big contraption to go with it. But I had to think real hard about how I would do that. K role playing campaign. The villain is going to be called the Crow Father. Nice. It's vitally important I stop thinking of him as Crow Daddy. It <laughs> just lacks menace. Yes. That that probably sounds like a good idea. for the blood god is such a great paint very well made yeah i like it um i have found that just like with nurgle's rot uh less is more when it comes to blood for the blood god like as diminishing returns where it can be a really cool effect but then i've seen armies where some guy just douses every weapon in it and you're like bro it's too much all of a sudden it loses if it's not a special effect you, you take away the specialness if you put too much on Hey everyone, I gotta sign off, gotta work. Yeah, Boss Lagfest, I never saw your question. I asked you to put it in there again, but um, I'd love to answer it next time if you have a better internet connection. There's insufficient data on, oh well, I missed something. Um, around the 1800s, there were ships that had all three, rowing, sails, mast, rigging, and a massive paddle. That's cool. KO stuff mixed with steam powers. Right on. Kind of cool, kind of cool. Good night, everybody who's who's signing off. I'm almost done. Uh, I have to do the eyes for that one guy. Uh, let's see, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have one guy be creepy and gross and yellow. And the other one will actually work. We'll make, we'll make a regular eye. So let's see, let's grab our Unsiest brush. Said he, said he was moving to Washington soon and wanted to play with you, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I know. I never saw that one. It always feels so good when you get an eyeball right the first try. Because it almost never happens for me.
Yo, yo, Conrad Kurz, what's up? Just hanging out and painting some dudes. Okay, let me think real hard here. What is left? What have I not done? The minute I put all my paints away, I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, yeah. Would it be important to ask for a close-up? I can try. This camera doesn't do so well with the close-ups. Um, so what I always do is after every single show, I throw everything up on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And then I also put it on like the YouTube, I don't know, uh, content thing. So you can go to the community page and see what I've been working on. Unfortunately. Uh, how would I do this? I'm trying to think of a way to move a camera to show you. Hmm. Uh, now it's in there too tight. No, sorry, I don't have a way to do it right now. I apologize. Okay, well, there's an explosion of the same question. Uh, Peyton, do you plan to make lore videos on Gotrek's adventures in the Mortal Realms? Uh, e oh, YouTube glitches. That's all good. Um, no, I do plan to do it. It'll just take a little bit of time because I haven't actually... So I, here's the thing. I don't really like audiobooks. I prefer... If I'm going to do like reviews and that kind of stuff, I prefer um, you know the written words so I can go back and reference things. So audiobooks are a little bit hard in that sense. Um, and also I just, I'm not a very auditory person. It's not how I digest my lore. So it'll take some time. Um, but people, enough people have asked for it that I, I feel like I should. How about that? I've been sufficiently peer pressured. Oh, Peyton, you're fine. I was just kidding. Just having a bit of a laugh. So yeah, now that I talked about people who add too much blood for the blood god, let's add some blood for the blood god. A sharper brush than that. Uh, have you swabbed the decks and battened down the hatches? I'm working on it. Guys are looking dope. I'm gonna do the same thing I do every night. I'm gonna blast social media with it, and I'm gonna throw it in my personal friends group and demand that Jack and Brent praise me. Question, could you do a lore on the Island of Blood battle? Uh, so that I would be from the old world, and I don't tend to talk too much about that. Not because I don't think it's worth talking about, but because it's hard to research for me. It's hard to find, because like basically for the old world stuff, I wasn't uh, playing at that time. So it always comes down to like Wikipedia, like fantasy Wikipedia stuff, and it's very unreliable. As I have found, because whenever I do talk about the old world, I'm wrong, and people get upset, and I get nasty emails and comments. 
from people who take things a little too far. For inspiration on your boat, you might want to try Googling early steamships, early transatlantic steamships. I will do that. Will you do another narrative battle? Absolutely, yes. I Once I reach a good point where I have a uh, fully painted army with this, uh, the Magakin thing, my next big project is going to be the terrain from the Warcry set. Uh, and that's, so like I can, I can do another narrative battle report like now. The problem is that all I have painted for it is um, the graveyard for terrain. And I just don't think the game is as much fun without vertical terrain, like being able to go up on multiple floors. Especially because I want to do a narrative campaign next, and I want to use my Corvus Cabal because I love the Corvus Cabal. And so they a lot of their rules trigger off of um, height, like you're jumping off of something and pouncing on an enemy, or you can ignore um, vertical distance. So they're, it's very fundamental to them, so I need to get that done before I, I feel like I'm really going to have fun with the Corvus Cabal. But they are coming, yes. I mean, I, I have everything I need to start doing a bunch of cool stuff. That first one was a great uh, test, and people responded to it really well. A lot of folks liked it, so uh, we will definitely be doing that. Okay. This is the part where I just kind of go model by model and just look at it and be like, what am I missing? I'm missing something. I'm always oopa, <laughs> dropping stuff is what I'm doing. I feel like I always miss something when it comes to painting models. Let's see. Have Tomb Kings always been in the AOS app? Uh, to my knowledge. Here's the thing about Tomb Kings, y'all, like, they're not available for, like, competitive gaming, but you can still play match play. Me and Jack played against Tomb Kings when we did the doubles, and they were awesome. They were, like, legit cool. Um, the guy made, like, a, a chariot wall that Archeon just could not get through, <laughs> and it was cool. But unfortunately, if it's not in tournaments, then it just doesn't exist for some folks. That's a shame. My complete and star train and shattered storm vault are set combo. Oh, they're a perfect combo set. I'll check that out. I love the. So, um, for one of the Rerolling One Battle Reports, you should go watch them, because I love that channel. Those guys are awesome. Um, we did one where it was my Bone Splitters against Jack's Iron Golems. And we did the, the you kit bash together the graveyard and the core set terrain. I loved it. It looked fantastic. It had some cool walls. We used as dividers um, from the graveyard set. Then you had the vertical height from other stuff. I don't know. I thought it was really cool. Highly recommend Hmm, what can I add? I'm just one of these guys trying to figure out what is left. Um, I need to touch up his metal a little bit. But yes, I agree. Like the, I, I think the, the, just the starter set terrain is fine by itself. Um, I think it kind of comes to life when you add the others in. Yeah, 
Here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick rundown check on everybody. So the effects paints are good. I'm pretty sure everything's been highlighted. Obviously three color minimum, that was never really a question. Um, I'm gonna highlight his boils with one quick color. That's something I can do. I can highlight the straps on his arm. Um, this guy has a string on his face. Let's get rid of that. I think he looks good. Put him in the Dunzo pile, this guy. And Banner Bear Man, we're gonna highlight some of those boils for him too. All right, let's do this. We are in the home stretch. plus that looking good thank you yeah i'll have them up what time is it eight o'clock yeah i have time to uh throw them up online tonight afterwards so gross. <laughs> if anyone is interested, I believe this Wednesday I'm going to be on Warhammer Weekly, so if you're not subscribed to Vince Ventrella's channel, you should go do that. And come join me over there. Are they ready to be declared the official three foot fabulous? Um. This is a bit, this is a bit more than three foot fabulous. I'm putting some real work into these guys. But yes, they're already three foot fabulous. guys strap on his arm and I think I'm gonna call it good when everything dries I'll seal him up Question, heck yeah. What's this uh, week's subject on Warhammer Weekly? I believe we're going to be talking about the new Monsters and Mercenaries Warcry expansion. Uh, which actually I need to, to brush up on. I, I When I bought the book, I, I devoured it <laughs> uh, reading into it. Um, then I also got sidetracked by trying to read the Warcry, like... Um, the short story collection that came out with it but 
yeah, I'm very excited <clears throat> to be chatting about it. And I'm, you know, I'm just that attention seeker enough to to want to be on there every single chance I can. I met uh, Vince in person at Nova. He's a super cool guy. Glad he was there. I felt so bad. So I signed up for a class of his and then found out that I had, I guess, misunderstood my schedule. Um, but I actually double booked myself for the doubles and for his class. And I was so very upset about it. And he was like super understanding. I was just like, oh, that's so kind. Didn't make me feel bad. Yes, you're still on. Sadly, Ben, I'm about to hop off. <laughs> That's always 100% always the problem. Oh, you have the worst luck with time and friend. But I'll be on for a little bit. I can, I can stretch it out a smidge. Go ahead and if you have any questions or want to talk about anything, go ahead and ask it. Let's discuss. Okay, need to get a little bit more. I missed one part of the armor on this guy. Also, Ben, I'm very sad. So Jess is at home right now seeing her family. And uh, she was supposed to come back Tuesday, but her plan shifted and now she comes back Thursday night. So I won't be able to make it to Let's Play again. And I am very sad. But you survived without me before. I believe in you. Just not, but poor Ben logs on and gets nothing but bad news. Oh. GW done any Dodgers of Cain for under, Underworlds? Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Was there a rumor that Dodgers of Cain is coming? Did someone see them in the art? I can't remember what the factions were that people saw. But to answer your question, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of curious as to what their um, choice, like wh how they choose what to work on next. I know they've they probably mentioned it on one of their... Um, no, Stormcast, the official Age of Sigma podcast things, but I haven't heard it. Just going each guy, making sure the armor's all tidied up. at uh, Nova one of the guys he was very excited to meet me he was very kind he was like man I wish I wish you lived around here that you could game in my local area and I just kind of chuckled to myself I didn't tell him this but I was like if you were to ask uh, like uh, Jack and my good friend Ben here on the chat like how good it is to have Doug around in your area it's like man it's the same you wouldn't see me anymore I'm so busy <laughs> I'm going to cancel on Jack for tournaments. He gets all salty. It's a whole big thing. I have to promise him that I'll get competitive one day. Okay. 
And for you. Yeah, pretty good in this guy's armor. Sweet. But when Doug is around, it is a glorious thing. <laughs> the extra effort is going to make some six foot sensational. Oh, that's great. I'm going to steal that. Six foot sensational. I like it. I'm flying out of work. Oh, man. Well, you have yourself a wonderful night out of work. Let's see what I got. Just keep looking at this big fat guy with no armor thinking I'm missing something because it's all blubber, but I can't think of anything that I'm like really truly missing. Hmm. Sorry, I thought I heard some outside. Okay. Sorry, I know this is, a, this is a, a boring part. I'm just circling these guys around looking for anything that I'm missing. Because it's one of those things that when I put a model, when I put a sealant on a model, like a, a finish, a varnish, I'm done with it. Like, I don't touch it again. So I'm trying to be extra certain that I got everything. Thanks, going to try to get some hobby. Don't know, depends on how I feel. Yeah, yeah. Always hit or miss. I, I tend to want to hobby whenever I get home. And then sometimes I sit down at the desk. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go play some Wolfenstein. <laughs> I'm going to go do something that doesn't require effort or thinking. Oh, actually, that's something I need to do. Need to make his the thing that this guy he has like he's the only model that's standing on something so i gotta make it match everything around it that'll be a pretty pretty quick process Kings look really good. Thank you so much. It's good to turn off and vegetate. Yeah, that's kind of my thing. The other thing is sometimes it gets in the way of wanting to make lore videos and people get mad. But I gotta keep my sanity. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, I'm not usually into shooting games. It's kind of a new thing for me. And I was surprised that I liked Wolfenstein as much. I mostly got it for nostalgia because I used to play it way back in the day. Um, the old school, like, 2D version. But uh, I had an absolute blast. But I got so into it that I, I was like, oh, I didn't realize there was already a sequel. I'm going to force myself to not play that right away. Save that for a rainy day when I have a burnout or something like that. And come here and get some Blake Kings painted.
let's see, what is... I throw some Nurgle's Rot on this guy. Isn't it crazy to think? I always, I always get blown away when I see stuff like this. Isn't it weird to think that like 48 hours ago he looked like this? It's like a solid green mass. I just love it. That's why I think painting's so cool. I just like feel like I really created something, even though I didn't like. You well, know, I mean. It's a creative act. I say like I didn't like create the model in the sense of like sculpting him, but I did. I did do some creative stuff. Favorite army to paint. Um. I really enjoyed Fire Slayers with their beards. The problem is, is that that model range doesn't have much else to offer besides that, if that makes sense. But I enjoyed the models. I just didn't want to paint. I painted, I think, 40 or 50 of them. And then I was like, I'm just not painting anymore. I'm done. <laughs> I'm it. I tapped out. <laughs> so, all right. I am super happy with these guys. They are looking fly. Plague fly. Okay. Dad jokes aside. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hop off for the night, friends. Um, am I going to be here tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Tuesday? Mm, I might be. I, wanna, I won't schedule it because I don't know what I'm going to be free. So there's that. Anyway, uh, I will go ahead and hop off for the night. Friends, thank you so much for joining me. We cranked it out. We finished it. I just got to wait for stuff to dry, and then I'll uh, do the varnish. And I'll throw pictures up online over on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Go down in the notes down below. You'll find links to both to uh, to subscribe there and, and follow along when you see everything. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I will chat with you really, really soon.